Okay, people, we're sorry for that break there. <laughs> I was trying to put my Bible in the right way so we can get to read together and read perfectly. And the Bible just went out on me. That's not good. That's not a good thing. Anyways, we've seen God fighting our battles and bringing in our miracles. And of course, he would do what he says he would do. That is the song that we have from the start. I can see him fighting my battles. I can see him giving me victory. I can see him bringing in my miracles. He will do what he says he will do. I can see God fighting my battles. I can see him winning in my favor. I can see him bringing in my miracles. He will do what he says he will do. I can see God fighting your battles. I can see God winning in your favor. I can see God bringing in your miracles. He will do what he says he will do. I can see my God fighting your battles. Yes, yes, I can see him giving you victory. I can see him bringing in your miracles. He will do what he says he will do. It's a chapter a day, people. And on here, we study the word of God every single day. The word of God has been so diluted, so much so that God thought it necessary to bring me on here to study the word of God with you. We study it together. We read it together so that no one gets deceived or no one gets played. And we talk about it together. So it also gives us the ability to know that we're saved and be sure of the fact that we're saved and also to show us where we are headed the promises that are available for us the power that we carry the power we possess and all that and what we spend eternity when christ comes so that's why we're doing a chapter a day here i hope that um, you all are enjoying it so far i am I don't know about you, but I am enjoying it so far. When we started, I felt like, oh, you know, I was getting all tired and, you know, like, God, this is not what I wanted to do. This is not popular. This is not. But now I'm loving it all the way. It's just like I can't stop. There are days where my Internet is playing tricks on me. I'm feeling so, so worked up and everything because I just want a chapter a day to happen. But before I used to feel like, well. If there's no internet, I won't mind. It would be like there was no internet. So I have a good enough excuse as to why I didn't do a chapter a day. But so far, it has been God all the way. We've missed just the day. And that day, there was no internet. And I tell you the truth, I wasn't happy about it. But there was nothing we could do about it. We missed the day. And I was not so happy. But anyways, we're here. So we start with the birthday party first. After the birthday party, we get to the Bible party. So today is the second day of November, second day of November. And we want to find out those who were born on the second of November. We have uh, three people here. We have uh, Mr. Che Jude, who was born on this day. Mr. Che Jude was actually a good friend of mine when I was in my country. And he is just so good in producing some really amazing tables, chairs, cupboards, and all those things. Everything that has to do with... Um, Um, How'd they call this thing again? Oh my God. Well, he produces stuff that has to do with trees, plants, and all these things. You know, wood. Yeah, woodwork. He's actually an awesome woodwork master. Yeah. So I used to go to his place. We got to connect through a program I was doing on the radio, something to sing about. And he was always tuning in and putting the volume to like the loudest at his workshop so a lot of people started listening and yes we became very good friends he was always participating on my program calling in and sometimes he would send me some nice goodies thank you so much mr chair jude god bless you okay and then the next person we have is mom laong dian mom laong dian was actually my schoolmate were in the same secondary school but i was i think a class or two ahead of her i was a big she was a very calm person and very 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 sweet she always had this cute smile she was kind of reserved but she had this really amazing smile i guess this smile thing is a thing for secarets i think so they have a thing with that we kind of smile a lot welcome mom nicole ajeno welcome 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, and then the third 
person, which is the last but not the least, is Mamka Moma Atanga. No, Mr. Ka Moma Atanga. Am I mixing this up? <gasps> you all should forgive me. I have to check this out. I have to be sure. 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. So I write some names and uh, I get mixed up. I write some names and get mixed up with them. Oh my God. Oh, I'm doing great. How are you too, my dear? Hope you're doing great too. Yes, it's Mam Kamu Maatanga. Mam Kamu Maatanga, we actually went to school together and uh, it was really great. She's also an amazing person and she has this beautiful smile. Yeah. Well, maybe it's because I smile a lot and I laugh a lot. So I have a thing with smiles. People that smile a lot like they're the first persons that captivate me this is a season of smile november is a month of smiles like you would have this really broad smiles and beautiful smiles not just because you're smiling by faith but because god is really going to do things that are going to be expressly glaring for someone to have to smile about you know so you have reasons to smile something to smile about yeah that's a cool catchy phrase you know how are you too how is everything with you Hope you're doing good. Okay, so these are the three persons who were born today. Happy birthday again to you, Mr. Chair Jude. Happy birthday to Mom Laong Diane. Happy birthday to Mom Ka Moma Atanga. God bless you all. So, Mom Ka Moma Atanga is actually a very lively person. She's fun to be with. There's never a dull moment with her. Yes, that's what I know and that's what I believe. Yeah, yeah. So let's get on. Let's pray for the birthday people and we'll sign out of the birthday party and get to the Bible party. Ready or not, here I come. Okay. Let's do this. Father, we thank you for these amazing people. No, I don't, I don't know how to speak Tagalog. I just, um, I just know only good morning. I think good afternoon and good evening. Maganda umaga, maganda ding, maganda. Oh, I've forgotten the last one. <laughs> so those are the few I can speak. I can speak it um, totally. And what else? I think that's basically all I know in Tagalog. How to say good morning, good afternoon, and I think good evening, which I've forgotten already. But I know Maganda Umaga, Maganda Ding, and Maganda. Um, I've forgotten the last one. <laughs> Bain or something like that. Well, I'll learn some more. I have a Filipino colleague, anyways. Lovey, thank you for all these amazing people who were born on this second day of november we pray oh god that you're going to bless them open the windows of heaven upon their lives rebuke every devourer in the mighty name of jesus father i pray oh god and bring before you all these people i pray that you bless them within we beyond their wildest imagination and let this blessing surround them like a shield run about and let no weapon form the fashion against them prosper in the mighty name of jesus Lord, I pray, O oh God, that they're going to be a blessing in their generation and beyond. And Lord, I pray, O oh God, that they're going to be, you're going to perfect all that concerns them. Write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, O oh God. Wherever they cry out for help, let's help show up for them, O oh God. They're never going to lack help. Father, I pray that you cause their destiny helpers to locate them. If by any chance or any means they have done their um, destiny helpers bad or evil, that has made the destiny helpers to to cut off from them oh lord i pray that you have mercy knowingly or unknowingly they might have done so lord i pray you have mercy and bring them back to yourself bring them back to you in the mighty name of jesus thank you heavenly father because i know you always hear an answer take all the glory take all the honor and adoration because you deserve it in jesus mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving amen father i pray 
that these people are not just going to stand before mean men they're going to stand before kings because their gifts are going to make a way for them clothe them with a garment of praise honor and favor that their lives are going to be transformed totally and completely to the glory of your name father that you're going to give them a sound 126 state continuous state of laughter that is going to be one blessing to the other and the other and the other if you tarry to come they'll be here next year to give a testimony of your goodness upon their lives oh god father cause them to be trailblazers peace setters and wall changers in the mighty name of jesus let money meet money in their pocket blessing me blessings in their life favor meets favor in their lives even as you clothe them with a the garment of praise honor and favor in the mighty name of jesus take glory father take glory son take glory holy ghost now and forevermore thank you heavenly father because i know you always hear an answer take all the glory because you deserve it Father, I pray that you're going to speak to them in a loud, clear voice when they're at that point where they feel like giving up, they feel tired, they feel exhausted, they feel like they can't go ahead anymore. You're going to speak to them in a loud voice and say, this is the way walk down into so the wound straight apart. Father, I pray that each and every one of them is going to fulfill purpose totally and completely to the glory of your name, that people are going to see your glory in their life and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Take preeminence, Lord, because you deserve it. You are awesome in this place. There is none like you. There's none who can be compared unto you. All other gods before your throne of grace are idols, Father. We just thank you because we know you've done it for this people. Father, give them a reason to smile. And by your grace, cause them to have reasons to glorify and adore your holy name. Also open their eyes to see those to whom they are supposed to be destined to help us to. Anyone that has pushed them away with their attitude, their character, knowingly or unknowingly, I pray you have mercy on them as well and cause them to have a heart to go back and help these people because they were ordained on purpose to be helpers to these people. Lord, enlighten the eyes and the ears of their understanding to be able to hear and understand you perfectly and clearly and be able to do your will promptly. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that you're going to cause them to go conquer their world and be awesome people and great people in jesus name we pray amen amen let it be so amen 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 let it be so amen 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 in their lives amen let it be so amen 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 let it be so amen 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 in their lives amen let it be so amen 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 yes people so that's it for the birthday party let's get on now with the bible party it's bible party time let's get the bible party started so today is genesis chapter 44 and genesis chapter 44 has 34 verses it's like it's a season of 34 34 34 so genesis chapter 34 has um oh my god sorry people sorry 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 that wasn't supposed to happen that way it wasn't supposed to happen that way I thought that I could hear this thing right, but I'm missing it. So this earpiece is the wrong one. Okay, people, let's get it right now. Let's get it right now. I actually got a mix up with that one. I'm so sorry. You all forgive me. Ready or not, here I come. Genesis chapter 44 it is. Let's get the Bible started. Bible party started. Bible party started. Let's go. Genesis chapter 44. And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sack with food as much as they can carry and put every man's money in his sack's mouth and put my cup the silver cup in the sack's mouth of the youngest and his corn money 
and he did according to the word and he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken as soon as the morning was light the men were sent away they and their asses and when they were gone out of the city and not yet far off Joseph said unto his steward up follow after the men and when thou dost overtake them say unto them wherefore have he rewarded evil for good is it not this is not this it in which my lord drinketh and whereby indeed he divineth ye have done evil in so doing and he overtook them and he spake unto them this same words and they said unto him wherefore said my lord these words god forbid that i seven should do according to this thing behold the money which we found in our sack's mouth we brought again unto thee out of the land of canaan how then should we steal out of thy lord's house silver or gold with whomsoever of thy seven it be found both let him die and we also will be my lord's born men and he said now also let it be according to on according unto your words he with whom it is found shall be my servant and ye shall be blameless then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground and opened every man his sack and he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest and the cup was found in benjamin's sack then they rent their clothes and laid it every man his ass and returned to the city and judah and his brother came to joseph's house for he was yet there and they fell before him on the ground and joseph said unto them what deed is this that ye have done what ye not that such a man as i can certainly divine and judah said what shall we say unto my lord what shall we speak or how shall we clear ourselves god had found out the iniquity of thy servants behold we are my lord's servants both we and he also with whom the cup is found and he said god forbid that i should do so but the man in whose hand the cup is found he shall be my servant and as for you get you up in peace unto your father then judah came near unto him and said o oh my lord let thy servant i pray thee speak a word in my lord's ears and let not thine anger burn against thy servant for thou art even as pharaoh my lord asked his servant saying have ye a father or a brother and we said unto my lord we have a father an old man and a child of his old age a little one and his brother is dead and he alone is left of his mother and his father loved him and thou saidest unto thy servants bring him down unto me that i may set my eyes upon him and we said unto my lord the lad cannot leave his father for if he should leave his father his father would die and thou saidest unto thy servant except your younger brother come down with you ye shall see my face no more and it came to pass when we came upon unto thy servant my father we told him the words of my lord and our father said go again and buy us and buy us a little food and we said we cannot go down if our youngest brother be with us and we said we cannot go down if our younger brother be with us then we will go down for we may not see the man's face except our youngest brother be with us and thy servant my father said unto us ye know that my wife bare me two sons and the one went out from me and i said surely he is torn in pieces and i saw him not since and if he take this also from me and mischief before him ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave now therefore when i come to thy servant my father and the lad be not with us seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life it shall come to pass when he seeth that the lad is not with us that he will die and thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant our father with sorrow to the grave for thy servant became shorty for the lad unto my father saying if i bring him not unto thee then i shall bear the blame to my father forever now therefore i pray thee let thy servant abide instead of the lad a born man to my lord and let the lad go up with his brethren for how shall i go up to my father and the lad be not with me lest peradventure i see the evil that shall come on my father oh this is so painful to watch but 
I, I, I mean, I, I would say, I must say, I'm not joking about this. I'm not lying. Joseph was a little bit selfish here. He was, he was self-centered and he was doing these things the wrong way. He wasn't doing it the right way. It's not fair. It's not fair. He had to do a lot of things that were not right. You can't use the wrong method to solve to solve a problem. It's it's not fair. It's not right. It's not accepted. It's unacceptable. You 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 frame people up, you cheat them, and then you blame them for it. It's wrong. I'm not justifying what his brothers did to him, but there's basically almost no difference between him and his brothers right now with what he's doing. You can't lie to get people. And well, I won't be surprised. A lot of Egypt should have surely gotten into him. Yeah, for him to be doing such things, you know, you don't, you don't do that to people. You don't do that to people. And then what was he thinking? They had told him that his father was alive from the first um, part. And he knew that his father loved him. And his father was already like, I don't know, his father has already lost him. Then he wants his father to lose Benjamin again. What, what was that for? Like it was very selfish. It was very self-centered. Sometimes I know that um, some people who have done some kinds of things to us deserve some level of punishment or some level of suffering or some level of, 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 of uh, I, I don't know, revenge or whatever it is. But vengeance is the Lord. And there is a scripture in Isaiah 61 that a friend of mine showed me sometime recently. And it says, God loves judgment and he hates robbery. So if you've been robbed, give it to God. Let God's judgment fall upon the people. Don't do it your way. And that's why we always, most of the times, do it wrong. When we are the ones who want to do the revenge, when we want to take vengeance into our hands, we mostly do it wrong. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. So we have to... We have to do we have to do things right. We just we just have to get this right. We just have to get this right. We just have to get this right. You know, sometimes we really do those things that are are just not funny. They are really just not funny. We because we want to pay back something that somebody did to us and we're doing all the wrong things that exist. We're doing all the wrong things that we can know. You can't use the devil's weapon to fight the devil. How does this guy do this? Tells them that they should put the, the money back in their sack's mouth. And I don't know why the people left from there without even checking. You guys had already done this the first time. See, we need to be keen to details. We need to be sensitive. We need to be sensitive. They had gone through the same process before. What, what, on, what on earth were they not just thinking that they should just open their sacks right there, there and there? They should have noticed while they were still in Egypt that something is not right. The first time you came, your money was in your sack's head. It should have, it should have dawned on you. Like this second time, we need to be keen to details. We need to be conscious. We need to be sensitive, but we're not. And that's why the enemy keeps trapping us in the same place over and over and over and over again. Because we're not sensitive. People, we need to get sensitive. We need to get to know these things. We need to get to be so connected to God and so in tune in the spirit. So much so that the enemy cannot just be playing with us anyhow. This time around, they, uh, Joseph went as far as actually taking his cup. And putting in one of their sacks. Oh my God. That was, that, was, that was just mean. That was actually cruel. And then here he goes. He wants to keep the child. He wants to keep the boy. These people are saying no. All of us are going to go back. Because there's no possibility. We actually vowed to our father. That we're going to bring this boy back. And all those kinds of things. You know. Like who does that? He was becoming too selfish. He was becoming too selfish, too self-centered. He was becoming too, too self-centered. He already had them said they were already remorseful. They were already repentant. They were already sorry. He heard them how they were talking about it, that God has already caught them. So I don't think he is on the basis of he was thinking that, oh, they might do something wrong to Benjamin. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. Because they already know that they were already at, at, at the 
at the verge of getting themselves in so much trouble so they wouldn't do that they wouldn't do that they won't put themselves in that kind of second scenario considering the fact that it looks like the first one is still haunting them see like no david joseph was becoming too too self-centered and it wasn't funny anymore and then he tells them and then they have to lie these people are just being loyal to to joseph and just doing whatever he's doing anyways he was their king like basically he was like pharaoh just like the people said there he was like pharaoh so anything that he did works anything that he did goes you know anything he says goes these people are also scared not to lose their jobs and stuff people will put you at the verge of you disobeying god they want you to do something they'll say just something little don't bulge don't be joseph's servants they could as well they were egyptians anyways so they probably did not know the difference you know but as a child of god you will get to a point where people will push you your job might depend on it your whatever your certificates might depend on it a lot of things might depend on you getting that breakthrough maybe a lie maybe i just watched the movie recently um carried by the wind or tossed by the wind or something like that where people travel abroad it's mostly the traveling abroad and it just happens i told someone that it's not really like it's a spirit basically you just notice that you're hustling and hustling and hustling and you're trying to pay bills and all that stuff and then by the time you know it boom you're already away from god not like you intentionally get there and then you say oh no i'm not going to do this i'm not going to do that no when you get there and the bills start playing a fast one on you and you have to catch up with those bills it looks like they're running ahead of you you start losing time for god because now oh that the, there's a possibility of you getting four to five jobs oh, so why not you get four to five jobs and then it starts taking the place of god it starts making you exhausted and all those things and then you don't find time for god anymore and slowly but surely you just die out and things that you used to stand for things that used to be non-negotiable with you you start negotiating on them you start trying to think like but it makes sense you know like one man, he was really actually on fire for God. But after a while, he just started dying out and dying out and dying out. And then later on, he actually accepted to falsify a document. And that was a test that they were giving him to know if he's trustworthy, if he's a faithful person. And they told him he was going to lose his job if he doesn't sign the papers. And he chose his job, which God gave him overstanding as an integrity as a person with integrity for the lord that was so poor that was so bad I'm, I'm not saying i got it all figured out i'm all perfect but there are things especially in this our generation and especially this season we know we're closer to the end as never before if we've ever been closer to the end as any time in our entire lives it is now I know that we've grown up hearing our parents saying that the Lord is coming soon, the Lord is coming soon, and some people are 50 years today, some are 30, some are 40, some are 70, some are 80, and they're still saying, yes, 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 yes. Oh, um, 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 God, is, God is coming, Jesus is coming soon, Jesus is coming soon. They've been saying all of that. But we're saying, oh, but he's not here yet, so how soon is that? So when they're telling you now soon, you feel like, oh, it's just the whole thing they always say. They normally say that, you know, like that. No, it's not just what they normally say. It is serious. It is really, really serious. It's no joke. It's serious. Very serious. So please, people, we need to get these things right. We need to put these things right. You know, don't be, don't be Joseph Sevens. Don't be Joseph Sevens. Don't accept to join someone to do wrong. It will be counted of you. God is not going to be saying that, oh, because you were a servant to this person. And so they gave you no. He says we should obey those in authority and we should obey them in the Lord. You have to obey them in the Lord. I don't think if someone, if your, 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 your boss tells you to go and kill someone, you go and kill the person. You wouldn't. So lying about something is also like killing. Sin is sin. There is no quantifying of sin. There is no qualifying of sin. Sin is sin. If you sin and the trumpet sounds today and you've not repented, you're going to end up in hell, my darling. That's exactly what is going to happen. Sin is sin. If you die today 
after sinning without repenting, you're going to go to hell. It doesn't matter if you had moved mountain. It doesn't matter if you had shaken the wall for the Lord. If you die today without repenting, my darling, it's hell you're going to end up at. If someone has sinned all their lives, done all the wickedness that they could ever do, and they repent today, and the trumpet sounds today, they're going to spend eternity in heaven, darling. Oh, yeah. And that's why the Bible says that examine your life daily. The apostle says examine your life daily to see whether you're still in the faith. It's for these reasons. You get to that place where things are so tough. And then there was this other guy, things were so tough for him. When he got there, he got a cleaning job. And the Holy Spirit was telling him that that cleaning job is a job for him for now. He, should, he got to a point, he was about giving up. Oh my God, it's good to marry and marry right. He got a wife who would encourage him and tell him, don't give up. Don't, 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 don't compromise your faith. Don't, you know, encouraging him. And soon enough, they gave him the same test. We need you and we need you to falsify some documents and all that stuff. And he said, no, that even if he has to lose this his, um, cleaning job that he has right now, he knows that God is making him lose it for a reason. But he's not going to thwart his fate for no reason. And they said that he was the man for the job. I don't know about you. I don't know when. Is it your boss at the office? Is it your friends that are making you to do something? You're not going to go stand in front of God with these friends or with your boss. You're going to stand on the judgment seat before God that day by yourself. And God is going to tell you that he gave you all that it takes. You had all it takes to say yes when you had to say yes and to say no when you had to say no. But you just chose. We have choices. No matter how people tell us or people influence us or people give us all those freaking ideas, we still have a choice to make. No. No, Joseph. I can't do this because it's not right. It's not fair. Why we do this to these men? They're innocent. Why we make them look like they're guilty when they're not? No, Joseph, I ain't going to do it. If it means I'm also going to lose my job, I'm going to lose my job. But we get to a point where we're so selfish. We're so self-centered. We're thinking of our own self personal gain. We're thinking of our own families and everything. You think God doesn't know you have a family? For every, every promotion, there is a test. For every promotion, there is a test. For every champion, there is a battle. And you have to get it right to be the winner. If you don't get it right, you won't be the winner. So please, if there is anything we should do right now, is never to compromise our faith. It doesn't matter. If it means you're going to lose everything and start from zero, please start from zero with God. As long as God is with you, you have no need to worry. You have no reason to fear. You have no reason to, to freak out. So please, don't be Joseph's servants. Don't be his people. You know, he sent them and then followed after them. And then was sounding like, you know how when you're guilty, like every finger points to you and you know you're not guilty. You know you're innocent, but every proof of guilt is pointing fingers in your face like yeah <sighs> oh my god i've been there before like everybody is just so sure you did it but you didn't and you cannot disprove them because every fact and detail is on you see that's exactly what happens sometimes but as much as that that's where some people's fates are. So they just have to stay stay on there. They just have to hang in there. They just have to believe that somehow God will make a way. If you're innocent, God would eventually make a way. So like I said, we need to be sensitive. Joseph's brothers should have been wise enough to know that these people did this thing the first time. Let's try to check it out this second time. You know? Let's check it out the second time. And they would have seen it there and say, oh, what is this? That they can see money and the, the king's cup. It was just at, this, at the entrance of the sack. It was just at the top of the sack. It wasn't even inside, like right inside. But they would have just checked it. 
And I don't know, is it that when they're putting those things in the sack, they don't let them get in? But anyway, so if they don't let them get in, fair enough, fair enough. Everybody can get into that place. But now you're out. Even before you get out of the gates, even before you cross the borders, aren't you supposed to just check? The last time they did this to us, I don't know. I'm freaking out. They might do it again. I wouldn't just trust them like that. They might do it again. So you checked, but they didn't check. Okay. And then another thing that I noticed in the scripture is that a lot of people are quick to give judgments, you know, like you just decree judgment on people without even knowing. Don't you think you should just wait and know if there is even the slightest possibility that somebody might have done something? Says, put the person to death and we are going to be your servants. What kind of judgment was that, man, for just taking a cup? The, if the cup is found, what's so much of the force? You know, if he has stolen the cup and the cup is found, is that really worth killing someone for? Considering the fact that they would have found the cup in somebody's sack. So they were suspecting that this cup is in somebody's sack. And then you all be giving that kind of verdict. Even when you're sure that you're innocent, please tender your verdict with mercy. Because you might just have been framed like it was the case with them. And if they have to take upon your word for what you said. You'll be in so much trouble. And the people said, no, 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 no. That they're not going to do that kind of thing. That the person that they find it with, they're going to take the person back. And the person will be Joseph's slave. And see who it turned out to be. It turned out to be Benjamin. How heartbreaking can that be? <laughs> How painful can that be? What, what, what's, oh my God. It's, it's something else. It's just something else. Man. That is too much. That is just too, too much. How painful can that be? How hurtful can that be? You're so sure beyond every reasonable doubt that this is it. You're sure that you're innocent. You all are sure, like 1 million percent sure if there's anything like that. And then all of a sudden, it shows that you're free. So regardless, whether you're innocent or not, do not give verdicts that don't make sense do not give verdicts that you think oh because you're innocent so this verdict should really deal with the person just what if one of your brothers wasn't as innocent as you are you is giving the verdict you should have thought about that what if one of your brothers actually really took the cup like what if they really really took it not like they were framed what if they really really took it think it's not possible it's very possible so next time tender your verdict with mercy and so when the cup was found <laughs> they all knew that the kasala don't boss that's how my nigerian people will say kasala don't boss <laughs> ah, they knew that this was where everything had just gone sour everything has gone awry you know how when you're sure like you're sure that you're innocent and then you get framed and there's no way you cannot unframe yourself. There's no way you can prove yourself not guilty. That's exactly what was happening. You see how some of these things that they did to Joseph in prison and in places started almost playing out in his life. He started using them. And more so, he had stayed in Egypt for a while. So it, it looks like he had learned the ways of these Egyptians. He had learned the ways they do things. That's not how he was, he was brought up. That's not how he was taught. And that's the importance of having to surround yourself with the right kinds of people. My darling royalty, when you listen to a thing over and over and over, it starts playing tricks in your mind. And slowly but surely, you start thinking it's okay when it's not. They say, when Eve was speaking with the devil, from the start, she really wasn't interested. But as she kept listening and listening and listening, she began to look at the fruit and then saw it was good. She took time. But if she just cut it off, like if she wasn't even hearing anything about that fruit, you think she's going to touch that fruit? No. So you can sit among some people. That's why they say bad company corrupts good manners. 
it's not like bad company has too much power over goodness no it's just that God knows that we are still in the flesh. We're made of the flesh. We're made of the dust. And so our, our bodies have a, an inclination somewhat to the things of the flesh. Except we're totally surrendered to the spirit. And even at that, we should not put ourselves in compromising positions before we start struggling to get out. The Bible says flee the appearance of evil. It appears evil. Flee its appearance. David was locked in, Joseph was locked in prison for something he didn't do. He was innocent, but he couldn't prove himself innocent. This is him doing the exact same thing to his brothers. But that was not the, that was not the Joseph we knew when he got in there. I wouldn't do such wickedness to my God. And now he's framing people, lying. Like, who does that? It was okay that he had not told his brothers that he was the one, but lying framing them nah nah he had blown it out of proportion he had blown it out of proportion and since he was like the leader 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 the like he was almost next to being pharaoh it looks like nobody could question his authority nobody could say nothing and that brings me to the place where you need to have people in your life that can reprimand you that can rebuke you that can call you to other when it is necessary Joseph didn't have those people. And that's why he could go on and on and on with all this framing of these people and doing all these things he was doing. That was not the right way to go about it. Yes, he wanted to find out some things. He wanted to be with his family. He wanted to be with his brother. But that was not the way to go about it. That was really not the way. Come to think of it, he should have even thought of his father. His father is old and then He's stuck to this little child and then you just want to take the child away from them without even thinking. Like, it's sad. So you need to surround yourself with the right kinds of people. People that are not only going to praise you, praise you, praise you all the... Oh, princess, you're doing great, you're doing great. You should also have some people that will give you a little bit of critique that will put you on your toes so that you can keep working. You should also have some people that will call you to order. Princess, you're overdoing it. Yes, you have to do this. <coughs> but at this place, you went way overboard. People will look you in the eyes and unapologetically tell you that you've done it wrong. You need those people in your life. <coughs> Sorry, people. Joseph didn't have such people. Joseph didn't have. So it's, it's just um, something else. I tell you the truth. It's just something else. So we have to be very, very careful. We have to be really, really careful. We just have to be really careful, you know. So we should not want to, in wanting to do the right thing, in wanting to get things done, we do it our way and we do it the wrong way. Let God be the one to judge. Let God be the one to, to give the, to do the vengeance and all that. The way he was going about it, it wasn't right. Welcome, Mr. Onye Dikachi Princeville. Welcome, Mr. Chair Elvis. Thank you all for coming. Please don't forget to share us out so a lot more people can come in. We're almost about to end our, our, our session for today, though. And we're talking about Joseph. And more or less, this part, I would say, is more or less about Joseph and the way he was taking things. He wasn't doing things the right way. He wasn't doing things the way that um, God wanted him to do it. And it wasn't a good thing. So, people, be careful. Ha uh, have people around you that can stand their ground and say, I'm not going to do this. Don't be Joseph's servants. He was sending them to do evil, wickedness, and they were just going ahead and doing it. It's like, oh, we don't have a choice now. It's, it's Joseph. You know, he's like Pharaoh. If we say now that, no, we'll lose our job. Lose your job if he has to. Um, we, we, if we do this now, um, I'll not be able to get my promotion. Lose the promotion if you have to. Don't be Joseph's servant. Don't be. Welcome, woman of God on fire. Mom, I came on Marilyn. Welcome, 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 Lulu. Welcome. And yeah, lose the job if you have to. 
they were just going like sheep to that shepherd. Poop, 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 poop. Put this thing into uh, 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 my these people's backs. They put it there. Frame them up. They frame them up. Like, who does that? Like, who does that? You have to be the person of integrity and stand. It doesn't matter if you... I, like I said, if your leader tells you today that go and kill somebody, will you go and kill the person? Because it's your leader. Because the Bible says, obey them that have the rule over you. No, obey them that have the rule over you in the Lord. We have to always remember, if we don't even see it in the Bible, it should be in the Lord. My leader cannot just wake up and have a vendetta against somebody and then tell me that I should go and kill that person and then I'll go and kill the person because it's my leader. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. My dad will not tell me that, princess, go and buy me um, one stick of cancer, which is cigar, and I'll just go and buy because I'm supposed to obey my father. No. I don't take one stick of cancer. I am buying no one stick of cancer for nobody. I don't care what you think. I'm not going to be rude about not going to buy it. But neither am I going to buy it because I can't. So somebody will not be telling you to frame people up and you're framing them up. You shouldn't do that. Don't be Joseph Sevens. And you too, be sensitive, be intuitive. The first time they put money in your bag, you saw it. The second time, check. Before I cross border, I did check all things, every detail. If they did it the first time, there's a possibility they could do it again. And they did. This time around with much more. Sometimes you'll be so framed up and you are so innocent, but you so can't prove yourself. You just have to go through the whole burden. And like we said, Joseph's brother, Judas, tender judgment will mercy people of God. You might be so, so sure that it's not you, but be careful how you render judgment. Let the person be killed. Really? If they took his word for it, they should have been killing Benjamin by now. <laughs> for something he didn't even do. Just for the fact that you could be innocent. Just for the fact that you could be framed. You should believe that any other person, the same thing could happen to them. So give a reasonable punishment. Give a reasonable verdict. Don't give a verdict that doesn't make sense. For a cop, you want someone dead? Like I said, even if someone truly stole it, even if Benjamin truly stole that cop, so you think a cop, just the mere cop, is worth someone's life? No. No, that was too much. That was way overboard. And then we also said, this is just basically a summary. We also said that have people around you that can stand their grounds and they say, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this with you. If you want to, you do it yourself, basically. Or you also have these people around you that are going to reprimand you. Like, Joseph, you're going way overboard with this thing. You're not supposed to do this. You can't be doing this. You can't be lying, cheating, framing people up just to get your whims, just to, just to get what you want. He was becoming too selfish. He had lost it. He wasn't thinking about the, the, his father. He was just thinking about himself. I want my brother. I want this. I want this. So I don't care what happens to who. He should have thought his father had already lost him. That was the first part. His brothers were saying it there and he knew it and he understood it. So he could not even be saying that, oh, they might rough handle my kid brother. That's why I want him to stay with me. No, they had already said that um, God had cut, was catching up with them. So there, was, there is no way they could do any other thing to this other child. Because they knew God has already caught up with them. And so if they do it again, God is still going to catch up with them. And of course, they were not even sure when the farming was going to end. So how, how, how sure were they that if they do something to him, they will not still need to come back for food? So it was obvious. So it could not even have been that he was worried that they would do something to Benjamin. No, he had just become so self-centered and for some reason started doing all the things that they did to him in prison, which were not fair to his brothers. That's like vengeance. A whole lot of Egypt had gotten into this young man and we basically could not even recognize the Joseph who was Joseph when he was leaving Canaan with his parents and the Joseph who is now like next to Pharaoh, like a king. 
who could not recognize the two people. These people were innocent and you're trapping them and bringing them back to yourself and almost locking them up and the people are pleading for their lives and everything and you're just like... That's how Potiphar sent you to prison, remember? And now you're playing it out again the same way. He, just like the guy had just learned the ways of Egypt. And of course, there was nobody there to call him to order. Joseph, you're missing it. Joseph, you're going way over it. We need to have those people in our lives. We need to have those people. We need to have friends who are like that. Friends who are not just going to do you the praise, praise, praise. Oh, princess, you're doing great. Princess, you're doing great. Even when princess is doing something wrong. We need those kinds of friends that are going to call us to order. They're going to look us in the face and say, princess, I'm your friend. But this one you're doing, mm -mm 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 -mm. I deny, I deny, you know, waka. It's, it's not godly. You're missing it here, Clinton. You're missing it here, princess. No, mm -mm -mm. fix it. Welcome, Mr. Morning, David, Daniel, David or Daniel. Welcome, Mr. Morning. I know that particular one is correct. <laughs> I think I know that um, um, profile picture. So let's let's get to that place. Let's get to that place where we have people. The people you surround yourself with has a lot of impact. David had been surrounded so much by this Egyptian, so much so that he has started having Egyptian tendencies, framing his brothers, lying about innocent people, and then bringing them back to himself and actually really acting like they're guilty when they're not. Even when they're pleading that they're not guilty and they're trying to give him some options, he's not listening. Egypt had gotten a part of Joseph. Let's not let our Egypt get a part of us. Sometimes God puts us there for a reason and a purpose. Let's not get it to get us. Let's rather shine our light in Egypt. God help us in Jesus name. God help us. In G, G, Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen. So, I don't know if you have anything to add to this, to this Genesis chapter 43, 44. Tomorrow we're going to do Genesis chapter 45. So please. Oh, Mommy Kim and Marilyn wrote something. Yeah, thank God. That's why we have to watch our companions. Look at our Lord. He went to settle around or say close to Sodom. But when the angel, okay, look at Lot. He went to settle around or stay close to Sodom. But when the angels came, he was in the heart of Sodom. I know, right, my dear? I know. I know. And he was like, see, see where he was. See the people he surrounded himself with. I even thank God that he was still like sane, sane to an extent because he was actually recommending to give his daughters to the men to sleep with. Like, who does that? You just give your daughters because you're scared of who? Say who? You know, I don't understand how things were working those days in the old, but it's actually frightening. So you could just literally give your two daughters who are virgins to appease an angry mob? Really? How are the people in the old? How are they really doing it? I don't get it. So David had been, um, Joseph had been so surrounded surrounded with egyptians and egyptians that he was beginning to have egyptian tendencies you know capturing people who are who are not guilty lying and all those things it had become a part of him now he was just doing it and it was normal and there was nobody to tell him that no joseph this is not a you i knew before this is not a new that came to egypt now you've changed there was nobody there to tell him so we all need those kinds of friends they look like friends that are like pain in the butt, but they are needed. They are necessary in our lives. We don't just want all this praise you, praise you, praise you friends. We want the friends that are going to call us to order when the time is right. And I pray that God gives us those kinds of friends because those kinds of friends are also rare. Considering the fact that it seems like most people come to us these days for a benefit. And so someone will be scared to lose that benefit maybe they're benefiting some way in some way some little way from you and so they're scared to lose that benefit so they won't be able to tell you in your face that this is not okay they won't be able to tell you that princess don't do this they won't say mom marilyn don't do this i don't think this thing you're doing is right 
you know call you to order like call you to order because they're scared of the benefits that they're getting from you that they're going to lose but it shouldn't be like that if god brought you to that person's life he brought you for a reason and so make sure that you fulfill that purpose in that person's life by calling them to order if the holy spirit tells you to do so sometimes these people can also be people who are not perfect in themselves nobody is perfect they're going through stuff so because they're going through stuff they might not see themselves worthy to go and call some other person to order my dear god used an ass to call another person to order it's a person who has been in prostitution that will be able to tell you that don't get into prostitution because it's not good someone who has been there will tell you better so it's not about time looking at them and saying, see me, this prostitute coming and telling me that prostitution is not good or coming to tell me that God says I don't lie. Like, you know, you, you've weighed them, you size them up like, oh, she's just coming from prostitution camp. Now she's claiming holier than thou. It's not about who holy pastor. God called Nebuchadnezzar myself and was Nebuchadnezzar ever born again. He was never old. God can use anybody to speak to you. Anybody at all to speak to you. So stop sizing people up when they're giving you messages. Don't size them up. Don't size people up. It's not a good thing. Okay, people? Please, please, I'm begging you in the name of God. Don't. When God is bringing a message, He can bring it through any kind of vessel. Sometimes when the worst comes to the worst, he will speak, he will use any kind of thing that is available. So be sensitive. That's the part. You need to be sensitive. You need to be in tune in the spirit to know when it's God speaking to you, regardless of what he's using to speak, regardless of the medium. It could be someone who is not even a child of God. God can use that person to speak to you. It could even be a child. It could even be an animal. I mean, like God was so speaking to somebody that the person was not listening that God had to end up using an animal to speak to them. A prophet, though. This is the prophet of God that is supposed to be someone who is in, I mean, like perfect in the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and all that kind of stuff. But at some point, he was so rowdy and not sensitive to the spirit, so much so that God had to use an animal to speak to him. Ha! Let's not get to that point, people. Um, Jonah was so rowdy and so noisy that he had to get to a point where he had to be in the belly of a fish to listen. Let's listen when God is talking to us people. Okay, that's it. If someone has something else to say, go ahead and say it. We're still learning from each other. We're still growing so that we can learn some more and some more. Tomorrow is going to be Genesis chapter 44. If you can make it, please do. Go ahead and read the Genesis chapter 44 before you come back tomorrow and we'll have a swell time together. It's always me on a chapter a day and I always say I love you so, so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. I really appreciate you all. Let's not only be hearers of the word, but let's be doers because the blessings come in the doing. If we get knowledge constipated, it's not going to help us. Constipation is never good. Whether it's knowledge constipation, whether it's real physical constipation or spiritual constipation or whatever you want to call it, constipation ain't good. So we want to put the word that we've heard into practice so it doesn't stay in our tummies and start giving us a hard time. Mm-hmm. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then the blessing comes by the doing of the word we've heard. So Lord, I pray that you cause this word to be engrafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts. So we're going to be doers and not hearers only. Father, bless us in all that we do. And all that we've had here today, O oh Lord, whoever is going to listen to this, whenever they listen to it, O oh Lord, let it minister to them in a very, very strong way and a very special way. Lord, for those who are already at the verge of wanting to do some things that you don't want them to do, Lord, call them to order. Lord, for those who need reprimanding, for those who need 
correction for those who need direction and guidance oh lord i pray that you're going to guide lead them and correct them with love in the mighty name of jesus teach us to be able to do things with empathy and much love oh god that we should tender judgment with mercy because that is the true way to do it thank you lord because i know you've had an answer in jesus name we pray amen people if you desire to get the audio bible let me know with a chat in my inbox and i'm going to send it to you and uh yeah until tomorrow ciao ciao